I'm Todd McCombs. Recently, we made our own take on a Bond song and opening title sequence called Last Day Alive. And since we posted that to YouTube, a lot of people have been asking us, well, what are your favorite Bond songs? Nobody's asking that. Well, anyway, we thought we would share our top ten Bond songs of all time. I got my top ten list right here. And I've got mine. We should establish some ground rules. You and I are undoubtedly going to have some of the same songs on our lists, uh, probably some surprises. But what makes a great Bond song? Uh, we have to first call out songs that can't make the list because they simply don't have the criteria. Number one would be, it can't be a song that isn't in the opening credits. It has to be one of the title opening sequences of Bond film. Right. It can't be in the middle, it can't be at the end, it has to be during the opening title sequence. Number two, I would also say that the songs also have to have a singer with lyrics. Very important. <laughs> kind of goes without saying. Yeah. But, you know, some great themes that Bond films have had throughout the years aren't going to make our list. Yeah. I was going to say another rule should be, you know, a song should have a sweeping John Barry-esque score, big brass strings, big epic sound, but I'm sure uh, people have songs, favorite Bond songs that don't have those elements, or at least don't have them to the degree that, that I like them. And I would say as a ground rule that the Bond songs have to sort of encompass the entire range of the Bond films themselves, going from deadly serious to over the top camp. You know, I happen to think some of the great Bond songs almost benefit from being this flamboyant, over the top, dare I say, a little bit of cheesiness. But like, like in any great sandwich, you have to have cheese. Well said. Uh, my first um, honorable mention, um, you would I'm sure agree with this as the number one honorable mention, is Monty Norman's Bond theme, James Bond theme. One of the most iconic film sequences of notes of all time. Up there with like the Star Wars theme probably. Yeah. It goes without saying. It's, 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 it's an iconic piece of film music. And you can really hear the Bond theme songs, or elements to that, in other great Bond songs. Uh, subtly, sometimes interwoven. Sometimes not so subtly. Sometimes not so subtly. Yes, and I would say for an actual song, my next honorable mission would have to be We Have All the Time in the World, sung by the great Louis Armstrong. We have all the time in the world. Time enough for life. But unfortunately, it's not in the opening title sequence of Honor oh, Magic Secret Service. And I love, by the way, how they brought that back recently in the last Daniel Craig movie, uh, No Time to Die. No Time to Die. I love yes. this. And it's used very well at the end of Act One of Honor Majesty's during the whole Bond and Tracy fall in love montage. Or Definitely it's... deserves to be part of the band, the Bond pantheon of, you know. But it's not in the opening title sequence. Right. I would also mention. Same movie, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, uh, the opening title sequence. There's no singer. Probably one of the, you know, one of the best Bond musical pieces. It's one of, yeah, I would say actually it's my favorite piece of Bond music yeah. by the great John Barry. Unfortunately, it's it's just a theme. It's not a song, so it doesn't make this list. My Biggest honorable mention is the song Surrender by Katie Lang. Tomorrow never dies. Surrender. Tomorrow will On time. Which was going to be used as the opening theme to the Pierce Brosnan film Tomorrow Never Dies. And, and it's in the movie. It's in the movie, but at the end. It's at the end, yeah. It was badged to the end sequence, the end credits. It is a good song. There's various stories. Um, Katie Lang, the singer, had come out of the closet as a lesbian, mm -hmm. and they were nervous. And I've also heard various stories that they wanted like a more popular singer. And I'm not sure that Cheryl Crow was that much more popular in the, the late '90s when this film was made. But yeah. Anyway, it's a great song. Well, it's it, their loss. It is their loss because yeah. this was in the opening title sequence. Spoiler alert, this would be my number one. That's a bold statement. It is. It's that good of a song. And if you've not heard it, check it out. 
It's Surrender by Katie Lutt. So with that, let's start our top 10. My number 10 is Die Another Day by Madonna. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm totally serious. No way. No, I'm not serious. I just want to see what your face did. We'll talk about that song a little later in a different context. No, my real number 10 is Garbage. The world is I will say that I struggled. I had two songs that were, you know, trying to get into this top 10 spot. That was one, and the other one is Chris Cornell's Casino Royale tune. But you know my name. You know my name. Very good song. Um, so I was struggling which one should get to 10 spot. The reason I picked Garbage, it just has everything. I actually think her voice is perfect uh, for that song. We definitely have that, the thing that I like a lot, the strings and the brass, the John Barry-esque epic sound. It's got a darkness to it, but it still has it still has a great sort of hooky punch with the chorus. It's got everything. It's a really well-constructed song. Um, yeah, it deserves to be in the top 10. I agree. I'm not going to say much more on that now. So I'll just get to my number 10, which is the most recent Bond song. There's just no time to die. This song has like, had a long journey for me on the Bond Pantheon list. I didn't like it when it first came out. You also have to remember that this film was heavily delayed due to production issues, then COVID. So when the song first came out in, I think at the end of 2019, I didn't like it. But because of the COVID delays, it you it's ruined it. It's a to listen more, yeah. And it definitely is like in my number 10 slot. It might actually get higher as the years go by, who knows? But it's a great song. I love the way that it's incorporated into the opening titles of the film. I'm, I'm a sucker for the ballads, I will say that. And, and this is a very soft song. Um, I love that she's barely whispering. It's barely a whisper. And she. And, um, I like the arrangement by her brother. Phineas. Phineas, he, he does a good job. Beautifully crafted song though. Um, she does a great job. I really like her voice. My number nine, you know, I can see this being one of those songs that some people love, some people hate. I'm going to say that there's even potentially somebody in this room who may not like this as much as me. But that is... So he strikes like thunder. Great John Barry, you know, sounds going on with the, with the brass and the strings. It's got, obviously, uh, the singer. Tom Jones. Tom Jones, which I know some people like him, some people don't. Um, but you know, I think he does an okay job. For me, it's definitely the quintessential Bond sounds and epic big band elements that I like. I will say it's unusual to like that song because I actually hate it. it Why do you hate it? It goes to the top and then finds five more tops to then go over. I think it tries too hard to copy Goldfinger immediately after the success of Goldfinger, and it, it, it just tries too hard. So, by hate, I mean, you would put Die Another Day ahead of Thunderball. Of course. Nah. I'm just kidding. But you have to admit that if you take the singer out of the equation, it's got some elements that you like about Bond films. You know? it's, it's got the big, brassy stings, which are a must for like a great Bond song, but like I said, production-wise, everything's overdone about it. All right, fair enough. Well, speaking of over the top and cheese, my number nine is. It's not for everybody, but I love it. It's to me, it encompasses all of that entire '80s Bond era. Yeah, I for you know the only thing I'll say is the synthy keyboardy part. It, it takes a while for me uh, to get to the hook that I really like, which is the chorus. Uh, the verses, you know, doesn't really do it for me. But the synthesizer is my least favorite part. I just think it's very, I just don't think it suits Bond. I, I it's, totally disagree. I think those captures the 80s. I think <laughs> the synth hooks are evoking the hooks of another song, which we may or may not make our list later, Live and Let Die. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, my number eight. 
is Goldfinger. I think it's the quintessential sort of Bond when people think, oh, what's a Bond song? A lot of them will say, oh, Shirley Bassey's singing Goldfinger. Great score uh, by John Barry, great music arrangement. She, she is probably, with most people would think, was one of the best sort of female Bond singers, Shirley Bassey. So why is it higher on your list? I'll get to that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say exactly why yet. It has, it, it, is, it is to me big band, you know, um, strings and brass, but it misses some other elements and songs that I like. All right. Yeah. Well, my number eight is the aforementioned The World Is Not Enough by Garbage. Perfect for like the sort of late 90s era where they're trying to recapture like what made Bond great. They weren't always successful with the films, and this film is kind of a piece of shit. But it's a great, <laughs> it's a great opening theme song, and it's used well with the visuals and the opening title sequence. Shirley Manson sings it really well. She's got the perfect range for a yeah, long song. Her voice is like, to me, it, it it goes from that sort of like dark tones, dark you know, sort of like elements. Kind of mysterious. Mysterious is good, but then it goes into like full on. Yeah, full she, on in your face. She can power. She can powerhouse. You know. Yeah, she's good. And she was hot. I think I would have preferred the film if she was the actual Bond girl in the film instead of Christmas Jones. She, she could get it. Well, Christmas Jones, don't forget, had three PhDs. She was pretty impressive. She uh, had a PhD in nuclear physics. I've got three PhDs. Christmas only comes once a year. And it's something you already mentioned. It's Billie Eilish. It's uh, No Time to Die. No Time to Die. I agree with that. I'm gonna go into all the same points we already made. Um, other than to say, I like the dynamics of the song. I do like the strings and the it, the brass is subtle in that one. You know, I, I am a sucker for the piano sort of driven softer songs that have nice building going on. I think the song is well structured. Just Build, some... Building for Billy, is that what you're saying? Exactly. Do you think the arrangement was her and Phineas or Hans Zimmer or combination? <laughs> I think it really captured the way those two work together and do songwriting. Um, but there's no question, they took it into the studio and, and gave it to these guys and they did their thing. And... I, I think it's mostly them. The Hans Zimmer goes way over the top. Most of the time. And he doesn't this And it doesn't in this. It's subtle. So I agree. Yeah. All right. Uh, my seven is sticking with the Daniel Craig era. It's just a fantastic song. It's unusual well in the opening title sequence. And it also incorporates a lot of external elements that were going on at the time. It was the 50th anniversary of the Bond franchise. The 2012 London Olympics were happening. So it's sort of that song, Skyfall, incorporates all of like this positive energy that's going on with Bond in 2012. Yeah. It's probably my favorite opening title sequence visually of all the Bond films. This, the film Skyfall, is, it's entertaining, it's well made, it's plot wise, it's... I'd say it's like the number two of his movies. Number one being Casino Royale. I might not go that far with it, but, you know, it's a well-made film. And visually, it's the most stunning photograph on I don't know if this will surprise you or not, but I'm going to go with Moonraker. Just like the Moonraker goes in search of his I'm a, I'm a child of the 70s. Uh, Roger Moore's my Bond. Um, I know that he can be kind of cheesy and, and silly, overly silly sometimes. I think the movies can be campy. All I have to say is a pigeon doing a double take. Or a gondola turning into a car. Or typing in at a secret laboratory the code that sounds exactly like the five notes in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. There's all kinds of you know things I, that are 
pretty ridiculous. Connery fit the, the zeitgeist of the 60s, Roger Moore fit the 70s perfectly. Yeah. Not the 80s, but the yeah. 70s. But the song, I mean, I'm surprised that this, this in another, you know, another month, you know, I could have put it, put this higher up on my list. I love, I love her voice, of course. I think it's some of his best scoring, uh, ranging, uh, John Barry. John Barry scored great. Yeah. That movie, that movie has, like, and you hear the theme all over the movie, of course. It just has that quintessential sound of Bond. It's the Bond fantasy. Fantasies, you know, epic. Escapism. Escapism. Sure, there's some, some nostalgia here, probably. I find the song to be boring, but I do like the disco version at the end. This is so much better. Uh, disco. Yeah. All right, what's your uh, number six? My number six is sticking with the Roger Moore era. This is the tail end of the Roger Moore era. And like I said, he didn't fit the 80s very well. And he's too old to be playing Bond at this point. But my number six... You mean you don't buy a 70, a guy who looks like 70 dating a girl who's like 29? It's like Ronald Reagan playing Bond. But my number six is... Meeting you with a view to a kill. Great. Easy song. Just like The Living Daylights by Aha, it's got some great synthy hooks that just really like kind of redefines Bond sound for the 80s. Yeah, it's my number five is the same song. I agree with everything you said. You know, we talked about aha synth, synth, synth sounds and how I didn't like the keyboard as much. So this, why do you like the view of the kill? This band pull this one pulls it off. I think it's something about the striking bold kind of jolts they do with the synthesizer, maybe something with the effects on how they're using the synthesizer. But it's very akin to like the John Barry dun, dun, you know, dramatic. John Barry arranged full full song. Well there you go. But there's something about the way um, that band uses a synth compared to Aha. I just like it more. I don't know, you know. It, evo it evokes Live and Let Die. Just so, like the way it sounds. It is also a super, super hooky song. Um, it is. Probably one of the hookiest. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the, the best Duran. If you're just thinking of Duran Duran song, it's probably the best. Probably the best Duran Duran song, I agree. Yeah, it's just a really great song attached to a really bizarre film. Yeah. Starring with Christopher Walken as the main villain, Max Zorin. I'm happiest in the saddle. What about the Russian lady agent? Oh, in the hot tub. The bubbles are tickling my Tchaikovsky. More, more power. So what's your number five? Mine is... I knew that would be on your list. It's such yeah. a great song, yeah. and I love the way that it captures the themes of the film, which is, so you think you know Bond, but you don't. Because this is a new Bond and a new era. And it is that hard edge gritty realism that they were going for with Casino Royale. But it's still evoking a lot of the Bond elements. There's like touches of escapism and romance in it. And it's it's got a great arrangement by David Arnold. And I love the way that it's incorporated into the film. And I love the opening title sequence with the song. I love how they take the elements of the music of that song and definitely put it in the movie. For me, it's always just been one of those songs that sounds more like the band, uh, that band song or that artist song more than it sounds like a Bond song. It doesn't sound like a Soundgarden song at all. No, I agree. It's a Bond song. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely isn't Soundgarden. It just sounds more like a rock and roll tune that I don't think of Bond when I think of that song necessarily. But it's grown on me over time, and it's definitely a strong song, and it's definitely it deserves to be in the top ten. I agree. But it's not on your top. But it's not on mine. I know, but I get why it's on yours. So good segue into what's my number four, and that is Live and Let Die. It sounds like a Paul McCartney and Wings song more than it does a classic James Bond song. However, I would not be surprised if that song makes most people's top five. Or top or four. even top three. It's everyone knows it. Um, it's a well-loved song. It's got producer, great producer, uh, the Beatles producer, George Martin, Sir George Martin. It, it's really well crafted. I like the el different elements. You got the first section with the softer piano. You got the bum, bum, you know, it's, it's got that great chorus. And then it goes right into this chaotic, 
hyperactive, really over the top third section. Um, it's yeah. interesting. It's an interesting song. Well, I'm not going to say much more about it now. It might pop up later in my list. Spoiler alert. So let's go to my number four. This heart is cold. He loves only cold. I was going to be surprised if it wasn't in your top five. So. I mean, like you said, this this is the most iconic Bond song. When people think of a Bond song, they most likely think of this. It's got a, a great John Barry arrangement and score, but without going over the top like Thunderball. Define musically the sound of Bond. Die Another Day uh, is my number three. And um, this time, no, I'm being serious this time. I'm not going to fall for that again. No, I'm really not even drinking. Okay, I'm not being serious. I just wanted to see your face again. My number three is uh, what a lot of people, I would bet a lot of people would put this as number one. And it is. You Nancy Sinatra's vocal, awesome. But I love the theme. The musical themes, John Barry's work, of course, great. Um, and everybody knows the main theme. This one. It is a great, it's a beautiful, and it's what I think of when I think of one of the best outside of the main James Bond theme. It's what I think of when I think of Bond, is that that melody. It's a great melody. I mean, it's, it's well crafted. My only, the only reason that song isn't number one for me is that I find other aspects of the song sort of disjointed, you know, musically. There are some weird things about it that I don't like as much as that great theme melody part that, that we just heard, but um, her voice is great, arrangement's great, and I think a lot of people would put this in their top list, top of their list. Yeah. I'll put a pin on that again, mm -hmm. spoiler alert. My number three is... It's one of the definitive Bond songs. It does sound like a Paul McCartney and Wing song, but to me it also is equally both. It redefined the sound for the 70s. And it's got those great George Martin hooks. Unfortunately, George Martin's score throughout the rest of the film is pretty weak, but that his arrangement of that song is fantastic. My only criticism with the song is it doesn't fit the film. The film is yeah. campy Roger Moore, black exploitation wannabe, and the song does not evoke that at all. For me, it's the disjointedness of having a great, epic, powerful song moment like, you know, -na -na, -na -na, -na -na. that doesn't seem to gel with a scene in a movie that has some stupid, goofy, comic relief. Uh, and Sheriff J.W. Peppa. Say grenade, Oh, who's <laughs> The top two songs. We've arrived. Um, I gotta go with Skyfall by Adele. Where you go, I go. What you see, I see. I know I'll never be me without the security. It's one of my all-time favorites. It's probably my favorite Adele song, not that I know her wide, full catalog, but um, perfectly delivered vocal. Uh, she's a powerhouse singer, very well-crafted, nice soft piano. I'm a sucker for the ballad -y. Your piano I, I, I love the piano. I like at least the piano is like the main verse section, and it can build from there. It's got a great you know, main, main course for Skyfall, and then it's got this beautiful bridge, um, which, I think it's excellent. The bridge is my favorite part of that song, for sure. Yeah, just, I mean, it's just a really well-constructed song. Um, and, and they pay homage to the great John Jerry. So yeah. they've got, they got the strings, they got the brass. Um, it resolves beautifully at the end. It's just one of the best. It also won the Oscar for Best Song, as did my number two. Nobody does it half as good as you. Some people think it's the best Roger Moore film. 
it, it's up there. I personally prefer For Your Eyes Only over this. Because uh, I like, I, I do like the harder edge, more serious Bond film. Yes, well, you put your clothes on, then I'll buy you an ice cream. But this film is pure 70s Roger Moore escapism. Yeah. Musically written by Marvin Hamlet, who then also does this really kind of fun disco score throughout the film. Yeah. Kind of incorporates the 70s sound in Bond perfectly. Right. It's probably out of nostalgia for me that this is like this high on my list. Some people might not rank it. I think it's I think it's a pretty love song. I will I will say this is a good segue because we arrived at our number our number one song. My number one is the same song. I agree with everything you said. Um, I, I think she's, she's got such a great voice. I think she sings it beautifully. Uh, you know, uh, yes, here we go again, the piano. I'm a sucker for that, uh, especially in the verse section there. It builds nicely. It doesn't go over the top of the brass like some of the other songs do. It has, has I don't think there's any I don't think there's much any brass in there, but there's definitely some strings, some building going on. It's got a beautiful string arrangement, actually. And I agree with you. I think for me, this might be some nostalgia that helps me Pick this song as my number one song. My personal favorite, Roger Moore, is The Spy Who Loved Me. It just it just encapsulates you know that movie for me. That song is a big part of it. But it's a well loved song. A great Carly Simon song. A lot of people don't even know it's a Bond song. They just think it's a really good seventies Carly Simon song. Yeah, unlike some of the other songs we said where they don't sound like Bond songs, I do think very much of Bond with this song. I don't think of oh it's just a single by this band or this. Person, I actually think of that very much as a Bond song. Speaking of Bond songs that are definitively Bond songs, my number one is. Only live twice. I'm not surprised. That <laughs> is the quintessential Bond song. It has John Barry's greatest theme. The film is mediocre, but is by far to me the best Bond song. Well, I've already talked about it a little bit. I won't go into the same points. I just, other than to say, I would not be surprised if most people would pick this, at least in the top three, if not number one. I will say, Bond songs also have to lend themselves to being great covers. And this, I think, is the most covered Bond song. If you've not heard, and there's so many, but if you've not heard the cover by Bjork, it's fantastic, check it out. You only live twice, number one. So, that brings us to the end. Uh, that was my top 10, your top 10. Let us know what your top 10 is if you'd like to share. But before we go, why don't we talk about our worst Bond songs? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. I'll start. To me, the absolute worst Bond song is Die Another Day. <laughs> what, you disagree? Oh no, there's something weird with this drink. It tastes like ass. Well, speaking of ass. The song Die Another Day, or as I like to call it, DOA, is by far the, bur the worst Bond song. Yeah. Totally, it's a mess. The auto tune kills it. Madonna has no range. She should not be doing a Bond song. And I like Madonna for the most part but she doesn't have the chops for a Bond song. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it actually fits the Bond. It just does, I don't think of Bond at all when you hear this song, but I also don't think it's a well-crafted song at all. Um, I don't like her voice in it very much. I don't like the auto-tune. I heard it's like a, it, it, I think people call it an okay dance song, but it, is it Bond? No, I don't like it. Absolutely not. It's the worst Bond song with the worst Bond film, but that might be for another video. Yeah. I agree. Well, my number one least favorite, or what I think is the worst Bond song, I'm gonna go with Jack White and Alicia Keys, uh, their collaboration on the Quantum of Solace. Uh, Another way to die. I, see, I don't even know the name of the song. That's how much I don't like it. Um, so yeah, I don't like everything about it. I hate, I don't think their voices blend well together. 
I don't think, even though I really respect and like Jack White, I don't think that is a good Jack White, uh, uh, It's not even a good Jack White song. It's not even a good, good song. And then on top of that, it sounds like they recorded their parts in different continents and then somebody forced them together and, and you know, so let's mix this now. And it just doesn't blend, it doesn't sound good, it's weak, uh, it's, it doesn't sound like a business, doesn't make me think of a Bond song, so yeah. This is a disappointment. It tries to be a Bond song with the guitar hooks, but it fails completely. Yeah. It, it's an oral mess. So. Yeah, I forget about it all the time. Okay. It's not, it's not as bad as Die Another Day, though. No, you're right. It's not. Speaking of Quantum of Solace, there was a rejected song, sung by the great Shirley Bassey, that was recorded and arranged to be the opening title song for that film. I don't know, maybe the Broccoli siblings thought that a 70-year-old was not hip enough to do a Bond song in 2008, but it's a great song. It's no good about goodbyes. It should have been the opening title song. Well, speaking of goodbyes, it's time for us to say goodbye. Again, let us know what your top 10 lists are. We've told you ours. Maybe you think the Diet of the Day is a top 10 Bond song. Maybe even number one. And thank you again. Uh, if you've listened to uh, our original song um, by the Shimshaws, Last Day Alive, and Chris Hill worked on a great video for that, the opening title sequence. There's a lot of fun to do. Yeah, I think we've had around 100,000 views, so at least I want to thank the, the people of India. And Pakistan. We appreciate it. Um, you know, well, maybe it'll, maybe it'll start getting uh, some views in America. That'd be, that'd be great. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, and with that, uh, please subscribe. Hit that like button or smash that like button, as the kids might say. So the kids say smash? I don't know. Okay. Go!